We're excited to, to get back out here tomorrow uh, in front of the home crowd. Um, should be a heck of a game against UConn. You know, UConn's coming off. A, they've won a few games in a row. They won a tough game against Marquette the other night. Uh, Coach Hurley's got them playing really, really good basketball right now. Um, you know, UConn, you always start with offensive glass. They're the number two offensive rebounding team in the country. Something that really hurt us, obviously, in last game against Seton Hall, especially in the first half, that we have to get cleaned up. And uh, if we want to have a chance to win the game, we got to we got to meet that challenge on the glass. It's almost I told our guys the uh, the game starts for UConn on the offensive end when the shot happens. A lot of times that's a pass for them. They go get it off the glass, and they have they send several guys. You know whether it's Whaley, Sonogo, uh, Tyrese Martin. Uh, you know they send four to the glass most of the time throughout the game. So we that that's the biggest key to the game. You know, secondly, you know, we have to have a great plan versus Sonogo. Sonogo is one of the better um, big guys in our league and in the country. Um, we have to do, have a team effort. Starts with our ball pressure. Starts with our weak side help. Uh, we can't just allow the ball in there easily. Um, then we got to have a plan to get get the ball out of there. We're going to give him different looks throughout the game. Then I'd say the third key is going to be taking care of the ball. They're going to be a high ball pressure team, man to man. They'll pick you up full court at times. Um, they'll trap ball screens. Um, you know, they fly around. We have to play at our own pace and our own speed. And if we do that, I think we'll get the shots that we want. But, um, you know, it was such a quick turnaround that we've had here, um, you know, less than basically, you know, 36 hours to prepare for UConn. It's, it's a little bit more about us. It's about blocking out. It's about transition defense, our ball screen defense, and our post defense. So um, but we're excited to get back out here, like I said, and play. You know, Big East is uh, it's a great league. It's the best league in the country, in my opinion. And uh, we got a great opportunity tomorrow night. Travis, you talk about rebounding. And I know I feel like I've asked you this before, but the issues with at Seton Hall last night were, was it like guys trying to turn it into a jumping contest, which you've talked about before, or guys not blocking out? Like, what were those issues? And, and in a short period of time, how do you, how do you get them to sort of respect that and, and turn it around? Because as you mentioned, like, UConn's probably going to watch that film against Seton Hall, and they're probably going to say, look, we can beat these guys on the glass. So how do you make sure that doesn't happen? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to, to answer your question about the Seton Hall game specific, Adam, I think we have to be more physical on the glass. You know, listen, I, I thought our guys were blocking out, but we got to block out harder. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, you know, Ike and, and Alexis and those guys, type, I mean, they're huge. They're, they're the biggest team in our league. Um, and we got to move them back. We got to create a bigger pocket than what we created. Being in front of a guy like that's not enough. I don't think our guys were necessarily trying to make it a jumping contest uh, as, we, as we've done in a few games you know, previous this year, but we got to be more physical than we were. And, and UConn's going to test that. You know, I think just a constant reminder, Adam, like, uh, listen, we could only do so much today. I mean, we got in last night uh, roughly around 3 a.m. here to campus. Um, we, we couldn't practice today. <laughs> You know, like, we, 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 it's not, it's not, uh, it would be, uh, it would hurt us probably tomorrow night if we would have went really, really hard today. But I mean, we're watching film on it. We're emphasizing it. We're showing film with the Seton Hall game to learn from that. They know who UConn, and we know who they are. And we have to set that tone early, and we got to con continue to do it throughout the game. I mean, that is the number one key to this game. Um, we got to answer the bell. It's got to be a team effort. It's got to be with the guards, bigs. We got to throw everybody in there and, and, uh, and to, to beat that challenge on the glass. And we've also talked about the offensive issues. And I know you said at Seton Hall that for the most part, you guys got the shots that you wanted. Um, turnovers really sort of set your offense back in the first half. But this is now a few games in a row where the three-point shot has really been noticeably absent. And is it is it a matter of Nate and Adam just – aren't finding their rhythm or, or how do you sort of determine what's happening with that area of your offense right now? Because it's like outside of Jack, you haven't gotten much production at the three point line recently. Yeah, we got to get Adam and, and Nate going. Obviously they're very capable. Uh, they're really good players. You know, they just got to get it going. Adam, I'll be honest. I think, uh, we need them to, and they will. And I got confidence in them doing that. Um, but you know, I thought, Against Seton Hall, our ball, I was just, especially sec second half, we were really good. Uh, first half, we turned the ball over too much. But I thought we were really trying to move the ball and trying to get the right shots, which I thought we did for the most part. Um, but we got to take care of it better. 
You know, I mean, you look at the uh, the shot volume, right? Like, I think there was a discrepancy of 16 shots, shot attempts. They had more more shot attempts than us. Seton Hall did, um, and uh, you can't. You're not going to win many games doing that. You're not. And, and that's with the glass, you know, blocking them out and then taking care of the ball. Um, you do those two things, you're always going to give your ch yourselves a chance to win the game, even if you don't shoot well. Um, but we do got to get AK and Nate going. I mean, I, you know, Jack's shooting the ball well. we got Biggs who can shoot it. Um, you know, Paul's been shooting well in Big East play. Uh, but we got to get AK and Nate going for sure. Travis, you mentioned Sonogo. He didn't do a whole lot against you last year. I think he only scored four points. Cole had the big game off the bench. Um, what have you seen from Sonogo this year that makes him so much of a better player uh, this, this season? You know, I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, he was a freshman last year. He was trying to figure things out. And, uh, but they're running a lot of their offense through him, and as they should. <laughs> um, he, and they and they post it a lot of different ways. You know, sometimes he, uh, they'll go high lows for him. Uh, they'll set cross screens for him. They'll set, you know, just they do a million different things. And, and uh, Coach Hurley does a great job in that regard, uh, putting him in good positions to be successful. But you could tell he has that confidence as well. You could tell he's worked on his skill set. Man, he's, he's a load down there. Number one, he catches it deep, right? Like he, he's, uh, he's all about real estate. You know, the, the best move is no move a lot of times. You know, can you just catch and, and just turn and finish? Uh, he can do that, and but then he's also become skilled enough where he can score his back to the basket over his even though he's better over his left shoulder, but he can score over his right shoulder as well now, and to keep you honest. So he's a load, man. Um, it's going to take all five guys, it's going to take an army uh, to help you know to keep him in check. And they're coming off an important win over Marquette the other night, where they Dan thought they really got their identity back. The first pass. Previous couple of games, they weren't. They didn't play with the toughness that he likes. Did you see that from what you've seen from them, from their Marquette game that they, they kind of got their toughness and identity back, basically? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think uh, I think they played really hard. Uh, they they, uh, they were handsy. They were getting deflections. They're one of the best teams in the country. If they can create a turnover, it's like a highlight reel, right? Like they have all those long athletes. Whether it's Andre Jackson, he goes out there, he's going to put his head on the rim and transition. Um, the, those turnovers for touchdowns, right? Like they're elite going from defense to offense. And uh, I thought they did that and did a really nice job against Marquette with that, just their physicality overall. Um, Tyrese Martin did some great things for them in that game, as, as did a lot of other guys. But, um, yeah, I thought, they, uh, I thought they did a really nice job against Marquette. And obviously with Fremantle fouling out last night, I know that that helped Cesar get on the floor. But – with what he did and how well he played, like does that earn him maybe a, a, a spot in the rotation or, or some more minutes on, can, you know, how do you sort of look at that and say, look, this guy got an opportunity. He really took advantage of it. How do we get him another one? Yeah, you know, I, I told him before the game, Adam, I, I told him he was going to be, he was going to get some minutes, you know, and uh, two, probably two days before. He, he's, he's practiced really well. I mean, he, like I, I said it afterwards last night, he's improved more than any player in our program from June 15th to now. You know, he's, he can score. Like, he, you know, he had eight points last night. I mean, he, he can score the ball. He's going to find ways to score. But he's also physical. And, you know, last night when obviously Zach fouled out, uh, got, 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 you know, was out of the game, um, we tried to play small for a little bit, right? We went, went with Colby, I think, at the four. And that wasn't very successful. All of a sudden, that, that lead went from three to tw I think it was 12 uh, real quick. So it was like, man, we had to play big. It was an opportunity to put Cesar in. Cesar responded really well. Uh, I have to say I'm not shocked, uh, you know, again, like I said, uh, through his play that he's had in practice every single day. But I, I could see him definitely being in the rotation. I think he can give us a guy who can score it. He's going to be physical. Listen, this is going to be a physical game against UConn. Um, and he's not going back down. He is not going to back down one inch. You know, you look at your team recently, and it's it hasn't been perfect basketball. You you guys have struggled to put two halves together, but the one kind of prevailing theme that really stands out is that your guys don't quit, and, and they've got this fight to them. And and right now at this point in the season, where where it feels like maybe you're stuck a little bit, how important is that to you to know that like you still have a locker room full of guys that that are going to fight for this? Yeah, our guys listen. I, we, we've lost a couple games here in a row. And again, the Big East is the Big East. This isn't the Atlantic 10 or the uh, MCC back in the day. It's not. 
every team's going to, goes through in this league. Listen, it's about staying positive, sticking together. We have great player leadership uh, in that locker room. With Paul, starts with Paul Scruggs, who's a fifth-year senior. Um, our guys stick together, man. And we're going to keep on playing regardless of what's going on out there. If they go on a 10-0 run, we go on a 10-0 run. It doesn't matter. We're going to fight. We're going to fight all the way to the very end. I thought we played, I'll be honest, man, I thought we played well enough to win last night. I did. And, and it's hard to win on the road. Seton Hall's got a good team. Um, if we play like we did last night, I think uh, we're, we're going to like the results that we're going to get the rest of the season. A little, little off a beaten path here, but Connecticut kid is one of your, one of your walk-ons. Um, what do you look for from, from him or from walk-ons in general? And I guess one thing is that they don't seem to play at all, right? Is that <laughs> kind of the deal here? Or is it mo mo most of the time, correct, yeah. They shouldn't expect to play. I always tell them that on the front end. But if they earn it, then I'll, then I'll absolutely play them. So obviously yeah. just con contributing in practice and, and – and Yeah. So I'll talk about Zach Sweetie. Yeah, yeah. the young man you're talking about. Uh, you know, great young man. You know, I, you know we went, he, uh, he tried out and walk on tryouts a couple of years ago. Um, I think sometimes those guys don't get the, uh, no, you know, the notoriety or whatever that our, our scholarship guys get, but they bring a ton to our program. You know, um, practice every single day. They lift, they condition, they do everything uh, that a Paul Scruggs or a Zach Fremantle, they're held to the same standard as those guys. And they bring a great attitude to practice, Zach does specifically. Uh, he's a great teammate. Um, he's a guy a lot of times, like when we're, play, when we're preparing for a team like UConn, he's going to be on the scout team. So he's going to be running their offense and their defense to try to give us as good as a look as we can uh, to prepare ourselves versus UConn. Um, he, uh, he's been great for us, man. I, again, I, I, we appreciate uh, – sometimes, again, we don't talk about those guys enough, so I'm glad you asked um, because, you know, again, we appreciate everything that they bring to our program because a lot of times they don't play. If there's a game where we can get them in, then we'll get them in. But, um, but in general, though, they, they know kind of the expectation going in. Would you, uh, like, you know, if the opportunity presents itself on senior day or maybe even at UConn, would you make an extra effort to try to get him into a game? Or Yeah. I know it's probably yeah. not on your yeah. mind. I, I would say, listen, it's probably not on my mind. But, uh, but if the opportunity presents itself, absolutely. 